Christine Jensen. And I'm Ingrid Jensen. And you are listening and watching Akia Ia Jazz. great festival because it's bringing the world in with so many there's just something for everyone here and there's a lot it's just really exciting to be able to play here because it is kind of my hometown now because I've lived here for 20 years and it's great to be able to bring all my favorite musicians on stage And for me, uh, to come and play with Christine is family. When she has a daughter, and I have a daughter, and they have a good relationship. We, 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 I see that beginning the same way our relationship began with music and fun and having a good time playing and hanging out together. So we just sort of take that to the stage. There's so many different groups that I'm involved with, but in the small group context, I really enjoy playing with my husband on drums because he's my husband and we play a lot together. And we're in all these different groups, so it's, it does, it's almost, it's a parallel relationship that I have with Christine where we don't have to talk so much about how to phrase things or what should we do here. It's all very understood. There's a deep understanding and a lot of trust. So I have to say, I mean, in, in the bands that I play with when he's playing drums, it's, it's beyond just playing music together. How important is it for them to be learning jazz? The young generation, not just our own kids, but their friends and everyone, everyone needs to learn about this music actually, because I think we're hitting a, a, an impasse now in our communication and music is one of the greatest ways to communicate because you don't even need words but what's happening with all of the technology and all of the iPads and the iPhones and the earbuds is that people are actually not getting a visceral sensual experience of interacting and not just musically but on every level and that's kind of what jazz is it's just this sensual hangout where you laugh you cry you get mad you do all these different emotions but you do it together and this insular society we're hitting into now with all of this technology is really interrupting the flow of that. So on a mass level, I think that this music should be promoted and we should be out playing it so people can see family. You know, <laughs> look at that, two sisters, they're not even talking and they, who knows if they like or hate each other right now, but they're certainly communicating. So I think that's the beauty of this music, it's, it's live music and, and it should be, everyone, the, the education system should be sponging it up and bringing it all over the world, not just in Montreal. <laughs> Hi. On the floor? That's nasty. <laughs> you know, the, the flute and the, no, the no. clarinet. No, I, I think it just, we, we lived in it growing up. I mean, I'm the baby sister, both my older sisters. We have another one named Janet, who put, picked up trombone, picked up trumpet. It just was natural that I play saxophone in, in the running, I guess. And I enjoy, I actually enjoyed it just from going from piano to playing flutes and recorders and the saxophone. It, it just, there was no big, you must play this instrument. It just kind of evolved. And I think as far as the idea of the difficulty of the instruments, which your initial question was, um, it's more about how much music is in you and what is going to come out in relation to the instrument you pick up. For me, it took a while for me to get the technical part of the trumpet together. I didn't just pick it up and go, la, I've got a whole four register range and I can play, play anything. And Christine didn't just pick up the saxophone and have mastery over it. But we both were brought up with a lot of music. And there was music in our heads, so it was just sort of like, okay, we'll take this or this and, mm -hmm. and this, and out comes the music. 
but then comes the practice, of course, to perfect that craft. And so people can hear it and go, oh yeah, now I hear what's inside of me. Whether it's really fast and high or loud, or whether it's just a beautiful, pretty sound. That's a little midi, a little thumpy. Maybe that's too much high mid. If you knew our mother, there would be no <laughs> smooth jazz in the house. <laughs> Even though she kind of was pre-smooth jazz. She would call that... I don't know, what would she have called that? <laughs> she would have said, please turn that radio off. No, she would have said, turn that bad sound <laughs> off. Put something good on, yeah. like Oscar Peterson. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Ella Fitzgerald. I mean, we had a record collection we grew up with, which we thought was normal, but we found out later, it's not so normal. But really very beautiful music and jazz, all, you know, people playing over changes and playing melodies. And eventually we bought our own records that sort of connected to that legacy that she set us up with. You know, Fats Waller to Bill Evans to, you know, Herbie Hancock. So if you hear Fats Waller as a kid and then you hear Herbie Hancock, there's a connection. So we did that and we just kind of carried on her tradition of the music in the house that we grew up in. I'd say my first record in like 2001 was when I started recording with Ingrid. She's on more of my stuff than I am on hers, but we've crossed over a lot because it went, here goes Christine's record, here goes Project O, Project O collective thing, and which is kind of the band that we'll play with tonight, Yeah, nearly, Pretty coming cool. close, and then uh, Things have just evolved. Then your big band, Nordic did Connect. her big band, and then we had Nordic Connect. And her, her last big band CD won a Juno. And it's beautiful, beautiful writing, and she just recorded her second big band record, which is insane. amazing, <laughs> and it's even better than the first. So she's, she's got a legacy of music that is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. 